Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Wednesday, February 7th, 2018. You give us 20 minutes, and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. We'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, action, and yes... Maybe a little lulls, and don't worry, we got some lulls in this episode. Today's show is titled, Russia Offered Poison Pill to Kurds. And you can get the show notes at isheadlines.com, and you can also get the show notes link in the description for both the Facebook video, if you're watching that, and the YouTube video, if you're watching that. And uh, if you can't be bothered with that, then it's, then it's iState.tv slash H023. That'll get you there as well. On this show, Russia's poison pill, killing the gerrymander, killer robots. Well, I should say, actually, killer sub-robots, shifts stupidity, and more. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here are your headlines you may have missed. SCOTUS denies GOP. Oop, I went to the wrong place. Ha, that's next. This is our top story. Kurds claim Russia offered Afrin protection if Assad given control. So if reports are accurate, Syrian Kurds are claiming that a day before the Turk Reich began their Orwellian-named operation, Olive Branch, Russia was negotiating with the Kurds to hand over Afrin to Assad. Now, the report didn't say exactly what... I, I, I can only assume that with that, the Russians also assured the Kurds that, hey, we're not going to let Turkey invade and we're going to give you guys some degree of of autonomy. I don't know. But that wasn't in, in the report. In exchange, all that was uh, really put in there is that the Russians would put the brakes on Turk Reich's olive branch. That's, uh, yeah, as you can imagine, the Turks refused. The Russians then gave them tacit approval to the Turks, or gave tacit approval to the Turks to commence with their Orwellian-named operation, Olive Branch. I I can't stress that enough. And this is from this is actually from Breitbart. So Breitbart actually did a a, a pretty decent uh, world report. That's good. Good job, Breitbart. Uh, Russia urged Syrian Kurds to hand over the Afrin region to Moscow-backed dictator. Well, there's that language. <laughs> Moscow-backed dictator Bashar al-Assad. Don't get me wrong, he is a dictator, but they're picking, picking that language uh, very carefully. One day before the ongoing Turkish assault on the territory, confirmed an official of the self-declared autonomous Kurdish administration in northern Syria. Now, the, you can read from that language. It's, uh, the, I, I didn't get the reporter's name. But the person who wrote this report, I would I would say this person, uh, while they don't like Assad, they don't they don't like the Turks either. So because <laughs> that ongoing Turkish assault kind of gives that away. So during a Kurdish policy research center event held at the National Press, Press Club, uh, Sinim Mohammed, the U.S. representative of the Democratic Federation of Northern Syria representative. Okay, that's a lot. Uh, she said, One day before the attack of Turkey, Russia, with the Assad regime, they have a dialogue with our leaders there, Afrin, and they ask them to hand over Afrin to the regime so that they can take it back, and after that, they can protect it and defend it. SCOTUS denies GOP reprieve in PA gerrymandering ruling. But that's not the real story, folks. And I'm going to give you the real story here. The practice of gerrymandering has existed for over two centuries. It's a process of strategically creating, quote, voting districts, unquote, designed to assure that one or the other political party has a safe seat. And often they look like salamanders. There's no geographical, local kind of logic to these districts. They're simply designed to follow 
where voters are, whether they tend to be Republican or Democrat. Now, I want you to remember that this practice has existed for over 200 years. And I cannot stress that point enough. After over 200 years of allowing a practice that fundamentally undermines my democratic process, it seems that the courts, the upholders of the Lord God Master, that is rule of law, have decided to act against this process. practice. Hey, hold on, hold on. I got to do something here. That's a sarcastic clap, by the way. A PA Supreme Court has ordered PA congressional districts re redone to eliminate this gerrymandering. And the POG, PA GOP appealed to the Supreme Court of the U.S., and that court has decided to not interfere with the PA, court, PA court's ruling, meaning the undoing of gerrymandering must happen. Now, I do want to say on this point that the the Democrats who are going to benefit from this ruling, they're putting on their their high-handed uh, moral coats of excellence, uh, acting like they're the paradigm of, of Democratic, Republican, representational, rule of law, democracy, freedom, liberty. I can guarantee you if the positions were exactly reversed, the Democrats would be singing the song the Republicans are, and the Republicans would be singing the songs the Democrats are. But lastly, let me just thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, you guys. You, you know, your PA Supreme Court and U.S. Supreme Court. Thank you, because you have proved that rule of law really works, even if it takes two centuries to finally get around to do it. Bravo. More, more claps. More claps. It's a beautiful story. China to have AI run killer subs. That's right. That's 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 not fake news, folks. That's not a sensational uh, headline. China has an unmanned AI driven nuclear sub in the works that has nothing to do with Skynet. Really, really nothing whatsoever. Uh, sending out an armed nuclear powered submarine in a charge of AI seems, I think it seems perfectly reasonable. I mean, what the heck could go wrong out there? And just to be clear, I welcome my robot overlords. <laughs> and I, wow, well, I, I want to. After this news, uh, I really want to make that publicly known. And if you haven't done so, I strongly recommend that you get out there on the social medias or if you have a blog and you make it clear that you welcome your robot overlords. And this is from, from Newsweek. China building artificial intelligence powered nuclear submarine that could have its own thoughts. Wow, that's, that's a headline. I like my headline better, Newsweek, so screw you. A senior scientist confirmed that China is building artificial intelligence-powered nuclear submarines that can think for themselves, according to a report. According to a researcher involved with the program who requested anonymity due to the sensitive nature of the project, uh, duh, the AI-augmented submarine with its own thoughts would reduce the commanding officer's workload, eliminate human error. Wow. Okay. And give China's Navy a competitive edge in underwater battles, reports the South China Morning Post. That's why I say I welcome my robot overlords. Adam Schiff says Second Amendment is Russian ploy to kill us. That's open mouth. Insert your big, hairy, sticky, authoritarian foot. And the person who chose to do this in front of the whole world was Representative Adam Schiff a member of the gun-grabbing party, the Democrat Party. I got, I got plenty of things to say about Republicans, but on this front, no, no, no. The Democrats, they own that moniker. They are the gun-grabbing party. Schiff wants you to believe that the reason Americans support the right to bear arms can be thanked in large part to the Russians who push for the Second Amendment in America using their all-powerful fake news social media bots. The motivation for the Russians is so that Americans can, quote, kill each other unquote that's that's what he said i didn't make that up he actually said it with a straight face and if you go to the show notes you can actually find the video of adam schiff actually saying that and uh the the headline from uh what the heck is this from the headline from 
uh, wherever it's from. Repre oh, MRC.TV, MRC.TV. Representative Schiff, Russia, big fans of US Amendment, Second Amendment. They want us to kill each other. South Dakota considers whether voters are smart enough for direct democracy. Uh, legislators in South Dakota are looking to tweak the way voters are given permission to vote directly on ballot initiatives. And it's a little bit more than that. And this is from the Argus leader. Needed change or unprecedented attack. Legislators weigh how voters, how votes modify laws. South Dakota lawmakers are taking up more than 20 measures aimed at changing the way voters consider policy changes at the ballots. The slate of proposals ranges from barring voters from bringing constitutional amendments to the ballot, of course, to modifying fund size. Opponents say the measure presents an unprecedented attack or, duh, on the de direct dem democracy process a year after legislators struck a voter-approved campaign finance, struck down, it should say, uh, a voter-approved campaign finance and ethics law. Meanwhile, the legislator leading the charge to reform the initiative and referendum process said it is susceptible to the influences of other state groups looking to assert influence over South Dakota law. He says, I don't think I'm proposing any idea out here that I didn't comply with or wouldn't. Uh -huh. If you minutes. don't do anything wrong, you got nothing to fear. It's that that's pretty much what he's saying there. I didn't take out of state money. Well, aren't you holier? You know what? I'm telling you, dude, you just invited. This is the House Speaker, Mark Mickelson, the Republican. Uh, if you, oh, whoa, we're Republican. Hey, this is the party, the Constitutional Party. The, oh, yeah. Yeah, but, but let's let's just take out that whole the direct democracy thing. Okay, great. So I, I didn't have people attest to petitions they didn't see circulate, and those are the things I saw happen. So I guess probably some initiative didn't go his own way. He's a little bit butthurt about it, and he wants to prevent that from ever happening again. That's most likely the real story here. The remote control presidency of Carle Pujamon. Carle Pogemon may be positioning himself to fill in a symbolic leadership role that may allow him to indirectly lead Catalonia without having to be the official president of Catalonia. And this is from the Irish Times. Uh, Pro-independence parties are attempting to negotiate a deal to ensure the investiture of a new Catalan president with Carle Pogemon determined to return to the post possibly in a symbolic role despite his self-imposed exile in Belgium. And Mr. Pujamon has been meeting in Brussels in recent days with representatives of secessionist parties with a view to overcoming the tensions that were highlighted last week when his scheduled investiture session was postponed. The Speaker of Parliament, Roger Torrent of the Catalan Republican left, declared the postponement citing a lack of legal guarantees. Mr. Pujamon is wanted in Spain to face charges of sedition and rebellion and would face arrest if he returned. So uh, we'll keep following that and see how that develops. But it looks like even after that little issue last week with the uh, private text messages that Pulderman sent, and in private, there's a lot of times that you let your, you kind of let your guard down and uh, you, you express uncertainty. We all have uncertainty. So he expressed uncertainty in his text messages, but it looks like whatever those text messages may have made you think, this guy isn't backing down and, and neither are the folks in Catalonia that support him. Here is your moment of lulls. All female crayfish threaten to take over the world. I don't know how many times I've said that sentence in my life. Probably never. But inside, deep, deep down inside, in the recesses of my very being that I could not act, access with, with surface self-awareness, that is a sentence I must have repeated every day, all my life. And finally, it came to the surface. And finally, I got to actually write it down and use it in a news item. And here it is. There is a 10-legged crayfish out there that is all female that is threatening to take over the world. It all happened when one of these crayfish, called a marble crayfish, escaped from an experimental aquarium in Germany. I, I am assuming. 
doesn't really say exactly. But, but what it does say is that the crayfish itself was the result of an accidental breeding that took place in that same aquarium around 1995. The all-female crayfish that breeds asexually is now spreading throughout Europe and Africa, making sandwiches all over the world for no one, just making sandwiches. That was a, that was a sexist joke, I know. I'm never going to be able to run for president if anybody finds this clip. And I'm okay with that. And in dis and destroying the natives, the native animals, that is, not necessarily the humans, although who knows, as well as whole ecosystems. You thought monsters were 30 stories tall? Well, they're not. These crayfish are more terrifying and more deadly than Godzilla ever was because Godzilla was just limited to Tokyo. Seriously, Tokyo just got flattened every five years or three years or however how many times it was. But here, this crayfish, man, it's spreading throughout the world. So this is from Science Mag. A ten-legged mutant creature that reproduces asexually escapes from confinement in Germany and quietly begins a global invasion. Within two decades, clones of the voracious animals spread throughout Europe and Africa, bringing devastation to ecosystems and threatening native species. And uh, crayfish's unusual evolution could also suggest a strategy to tackle a more infamous clonal monster, cancer. In many ways, the invasive expansion of the marbled crayfish is analogous to a cancerous lineage spreading asexually at the expense of its host, says John Francois Flo, an evolutionary genomist at the Free University Five of Russell, Russell's, who was not involved with the work. You, you're, you're definitely going to want to go to the to the show notes for that and read more. Facebook to offer video creators ad revenue sharing. And this is big news for content creators. I happen to be one of them, especially those recently hit by YouTube's changes in its partnership program. I happen to be one of them too. Facebook may soon be offering video content creators opportunities to share in ad revenue. According to CNB sources, Facebook wants to create a tiered advertising system that would allow creators to upload their content for free, then earn revenue from ads placed into the videos. That way, says CNBC, Facebook can fill its watch platform with content it won't have to pay for up front. CNB sources say that Facebook pays some creators for rights to their shows in a range of $10,000 to $500,000 per episode. They're not paying me, by the way. Facebook's not paying me for this show. While other shows are uploaded for free as a partner. Freedom fighter bandit bank robber captured. I got to read that again because I got to get the flow of that. Freedom fighter bank. No, I didn't do it there. Let me try this again. Freedom fighter bandit bank robber captured. That is a sentence. I really enjoyed that sentence. I enjoyed having it come out of my mouth and I'm really sad that it's over. A woman who calls herself the Freedom Fighter Bandit is alleged to have carried out nine bank robberies. These robberies have taken place over the course of four months and all took place in and around Atlanta, Georgia. She claimed that she was doing so for a social cause. And this past Monday, February 5th, 2017, the Freedom Fighter Bandit was nabbed. Turns out that her name was Nilsa Marie Urena, 25, of Atlanta. And I'm going to read that sentence again because I enjoyed it so much. Freedom fighter bandit bank robber captured. Oh, that felt good. Uh, not that I was for her being captured one way or another. Uh, well, maybe maybe it was okay she was captured. I don't want to sound like a total anarchist. Uh, this is from Fox News. The Atlanta FBI agents announced Monday the capture of the freedom fighter bandit who they said robbed nine banks, blah, blah. Nielsa Marie Urena, 25, was taken into custody. Ah, it was Saturday, not Monday. After allegedly robbing a bank robber, a bank in, oh my, a bank robber. Now that would be really great if she robbed a bank robber. <laughs> if a bank robber robbed a bank robber. That, I'm sure it's happened, but it's never been reported. Uh, in Tennessee Saturday, she wanted for, she's wanted for a bank robbery spree that began last October. Well, I already said that. And Atlanta FBI spokesman Kevin Rosen said Urena earned her moniker because she states that she is robbing the banks for a cause. He wasn't saying what that cause was. I don't know why. Why wasn't he doing that? Why wasn't he saying what that cause was? And now, folks, uh, leave it to you to go ahead and Google bank robber robs bank robber. I bet you a story is out there. Two if minutes. you find it, be sure you share it with me. Our last story here. British man gets police visit after criticizing government. So if you question your government and you live in the UK, you might just find the police stopping by to pay you a visit. 
And if you were a former member of that government and you question it and you live in the UK, you might find the police stopping by to pay you a visit. This is what a former councillor in Suffolk is claiming. And this is from Telegraph UK, former councillor who used social media to criticize local government spending was visited at home by police officers. Tony Boxford, 61, was stunned to see uniformed officers outside his home and accused Suffolk police of wasting valuable time and resources. It's ridiculous, he said. They don't have the resources to deal with traffic issues or parking problems, yet they have time to come and knock on people's doors on behalf of the council. It has also been claimed that a second man received a One similar minute. visit from the police after making critical comments about the town's council's clerk on social media and a and at a private Christmas party. Well, they do have their hate laws in in England, so I guess this is part of the result of that. And here are some of the other headlines that we did not get to. Man killed by police was also shot by cops last year. Crypto anarchist says gun control dies with rise of 30 ghost seconds. Guns. Body on chip bioprinting aid doctors in targeted treatment. Prepping through hydroponics rooftop gardens. FCC reaches consent decree with non-commercial broadcaster imposing largest fine ever issued for underwriting. You're literally surviving woman's strike to live off grid in northern Alberta. The rebirth of Somaliland, the peace accord. South Dakota couple turns old school into community center. And finally, smart clothes and folding phones tip the scientists finally create bending batteries. And you heard the beep, 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 beep. And I think you know what that means. That's all we have today for headlines you may have missed. And if you would like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com or istate.tv uh, slash H. What, what is our number here? H. Let me just double check here. What's, what's our number? What episode number is this? Oh, yes. We're going to go to istate.tv H023, and you can get the show notes there. You can also get the show notes in the link for the YouTube description as well as the Facebook description. And uh, these are the show notes for February 7th, 2018. As always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Until tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying, have a great rest of your day, fellow iStaters.